Uh, Josh, thank you for uh, taking some time to join us and, and talk about the game. I know you started out with the Knicks. You're now in Miami playing with the Heat. You've had a pretty nice start. you got a couple of good franchises uh, to start your career. How's life on, uh, on South Beach? Uh, life's great. Um, we're in Detroit right now. It's the first time I've seen snow all season. Uh, <laughs> first time I've been cold, actually, too. So uh, it's, it's definitely nice living on South Beach, uh, enjoying the warm weather. Uh, and it's a great city to live in. Yeah, and of course, you play with LeBron James. Everybody knows LeBron is a, a Kentucky guy. Uh, what's it like playing with him? Anthony Davis said over the summer he learned a lot in that short span at the Olympics about being a professional and working hard. What is it like being uh, with LeBron every single day, the greatest player in the world, really? Uh, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal to be able to play with him. Uh, just watching him, growing up watching him, and uh, now and actually being able to be on his team, seeing his work, et work ethic, uh, seeing how he interacts with other people, seeing what kind of teammate he is. Uh, he's just a phenomenal player, uh, a great person, and a great teammate. Is, is he like? Is he a real UK fan though? Like, is he jacked up about the U of L game, or like, do you guys ever talk about the Cats or Coach Cal, things like that? Uh, yeah, me and him talk about Kentucky a lot. Uh, you know, he's a he's a great he's a big Kentucky fan. Uh, he's high he's high on them, and uh, right now he knows that they're down. Uh, me and him talk about it. Um, you know, they're just young. They don't have the leadership that they had in the past, and uh, he knows that. We know that, and uh, me and him are going to try to come catch a game this season. Nice. So you talk about the leadership. What? Where does that come from? You know, Coach Cal says he needs somebody to, to kind of assume the leadership of this team. And, and there are a lot of new players on the team, obviously. Are leaders made? Are, you know, can at least freshman guys be a leader? Or is that just something you're born with, like a guy that naturally wants to lead on this team? Uh, I, I think it's a little bit of both. you got to have that instinct in you, and then you just got to be a man and step up and do it. Uh, you know, Coach Cal has always had a leader on his past previous teams. It's uh, his first year with Patrick. Um, his my, my senior year was me and Darius and DeAndre, and then last year was Darius. And uh, right now he's just waiting for somebody to step up and be that leader, no matter who it is. It doesn't have to be somebody that's playing. Just go out there and show them what hard work is and show them that you got to play with, with heart. Well, the last time UK went into the Yum Center, you were the star of the game. You took over uh, a team that was probably Kentucky was, was expected to, to lose to Louisville that year. Kind of the same thing this year. Louisville was the favorite. Do you take a different mentality? Like going into this game, coaches say it's just another game. Coach Cal says, you know, we're worried about seeding in the tournament. But as a player, when you prepare for this UK U of L game, do you take on uh, extra responsibility, I guess, uh, taking on the cards? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of hype that goes around this game. Uh, you know, a lot of fans, trash talk. And uh, it's hard for players because, you know, growing up, we might not have been a big. UK fan or anything like that we might not know the rivalry um, but the longer you're in the program the more you adapt to that rivalry and the more the hatred you have for Louisville uh, so it's gonna it's gonna be hard for the young guys to have that hatred uh, you know the first year but as the years go on you get that hatred but uh, at the same time you still want to go out there and uh, make everybody happy. The team this year, a lot of people compare it to your senior season with Terrence Jones, Brandon Knight, and you know, DeAndre and those guys. You had some struggles early on in SEC play up and down, but then you turned it into a run, got to a Final Four. How do, what was the, the, the mentality that went into that? How did you guys take that adversity and instead of getting down, turn it around and make a push to the Final Four, got close to winning a national championship? Uh, we just we just kept our head straight. Uh, we knew what our goal was, and uh, we knew that we could do it. We just had to come together, and everybody had to sacrifice and be a part of the team and uh, play for Kentucky and not f for individual selves. And uh, we got hot right at the right time. Uh, going to the SEC tournament, uh, we got really hot, started playing really great basketball. Everybody's playing at the top of their game. And uh, going into the tournament, uh, we all knew that, you know, this could be our last shot. So uh, let's go out here and play as hard as we can. And uh, we did, and we went to the Final Four. And like you said, we were close to winning a championship, uh, but we fell short. And Coach Cal, part of what he's doing to help push those guys is he has Camp Cal and bring them in running, working them out. I know you've gone through that sort of thing. What, what's going on right now? Take us inside Camp Cal, what, what he's telling these guys as he's working them out, doing extra running, whatever, and, and how that helps you. I know uh, you benefited from that individually as a player. Hel helping conditioning, I guess, turn you into a guy who uh, has, has a better motor on the court or however it works. Um, for me personally, it just, uh, I guess, 
motivated me. Uh, I started seeing results. I started seeing uh, my game elevate to another level that I've never seen. And uh, my body was in phenomenal shape. And uh, you know, guys couldn't keep up with me in the game. I could go 40 minutes and nobody could keep up with me. And I could play the entire game and not be tired. And at first, you know, I thought it was punishment. I didn't want to do it. I hated every bit of it. But as weeks went by and I started seeing results and my game elevate, uh, I started looking at it as, you know, this is making me better. So let's go in here with an open mind and let's attack it and uh, get better every day. Now, of course, the NBA full of former cats right now. Uh, how many of those guys you still keep up with and talk? I know you see them all the time. You guys, it seems like every game there's a Kentucky player playing. How many of those guys you keep up with and still talk to? I, I keep up with uh, everybody I've played with, um, John, Demarcus, Eric, Pat, Brandon, DeAndre, Darius, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. And uh, all those guys that I play with um, and, and the guys from last year, Anthony, uh, Michael Kidd, you know, especially when we see him, we always talk and hang out and have a good time. Uh, but I, I mainly keep up with the guys that I played with. Uh, we text, uh, you know, tell each other good game or uh, just seeing how each other are doing just to, just to keep the, the friendship there. And you mentioned DeMarcus. He's had kind of up and down in Sacramento, had some struggles with the coach, uh, things like that. But that's not the DeMarcus we saw in Lexington. I know you know him as a person. W what is the real DeMarcus Cousins? He's not the guy. I mean, he seems pretty vilified right now, but he's, you've seen him up close. Is he the guy that Kentucky fans saw, fun-loving guy, has a good heart? Uh, yeah, everybody portrays DeMarcus as a uh, bad guy, um, that he, you know, is selfish. Um, but De DeMarcus is totally opposite. Uh, for me personally, knowing him, uh, being one of his best friends is, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great guy. You just got to get to know him. You got to know that good side of DeMarcus that, uh, you know, he's loving, he's funny, he likes to joke around, he has a good sense of humor, a great heart. Um, just, you know, sometimes just people – people know it gets on his nerves and they like to push his buttons and uh you know and and he's he's not at that uh i guess age or state in mind where he can just brush it off and keep going uh he likes to retaliate sometimes and uh with time he'll learn and uh, with time he'll just be able to shrug his shoulders and you know say forget it uh, but right now you know he's young uh still a little bit immature um but but all in all he's a great kid now before we let you go on a completely different note uh, UK football got a commitment last week from a kid named Stephen Borden. His dad is the wrestler Sting. And so we've been asking everybody if they're a wrestling fan. When you were a kid, did you have a favorite wrestler? Did you get into uh, all the WWF and WCW stuff? Yeah, I, I loved wrestling growing up, and Sting was definitely my favorite character. Um, white mask, baseball bat. <laughs> every, every, every time I had played a wrestling game, I was always Sting. And, uh, you know, he's, he's still one of my favorites. Well, after, maybe after you and LeBron come to a basketball game, you guys can paint your faces and come to a U.K. football game next season. I'm sure he'd like that, too. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, very much for joining us. Best of luck this season uh, as you guys pursue a title. Thank you very much.